Hey everybody and welcome back to Premiere Gal. In this video, you're going to learn how to place text behind moving objects in your video. If you guys are new here, I create weekly video tutorials to help you create better video and photos. So consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell so you're notified when I make new videos every week. And before we jump in, I want to let you guys know that I do monthly giveaways with my partners of awesome video prizes. So if you go to premiergal.com slash giveaways, you can enter to win something awesome. All right, let's jump into it. So here in After Effects, I have the final composition of this boat moving in front of the text. And what I did here was I created this text layer that was not there before. And I also created a mask on this text layer and I inverted it and then I animated it. So let me walk you through step by step how to do this. So let's close this composition. So this is the original boat clip that I got from Pond5, which is a marketplace for stock video, music, sound effects, and a whole lot more. And I'll link to the specific clip in the description box below. To create a new composition, right click on the video clip and select new comp from selection. The first step is to create text. Go to the horizontal type tool, click, and type out the word that you want. I'm going to type out behind. And then I'm going to use the selection tool to move this into place and I'm going to place it somewhere along the horizon line here. And the font I use is Futura PT and I made the font quite large to 520. All right, now the next step is to move our CTI, which is the playhead here, to get the boat in the middle of the frame. And you can also align this text, I forgot to mention, if you select this text, you can also go to align and horizontally align it so it's directly in the center. So what we want to do is create a mask on the text layer around the boat and then we will invert it. So to better see the boat, let's actually temporarily turn off this text layer by hitting that eye. And then we can zoom in to draw our mask. So to zoom in, you can select the magnify tool or hit Z on your keyboard and then you can select and lasso an area to zoom in closer. And we want to zoom in as close as possible here because we want to be as accurate around these edges as possible. So to create and start a mask, you're going to go up here and select the pen tool or hit G on your keyboard. And I also use H for the hand tool, if you hit H on your keyboard, to reposition this better in frame. And then you can just hit G to recreate the pen tool. So click, and then you will see if I toggle down that a mask was created on the text layer. So let's go ahead and draw our mask here. Click again, and you'll notice that I'm not creating it directly on the edge because I want some pixels on the border because as we animate in just a few minutes, you will notice that it doesn't animate perfectly with the edges and we don't want the black edge to show if this mask moves over here. So we want it to be as least noticeable as possible. So we want to be inside just a few pixels. You'll notice if I zoom in that each of these squares is a pixel, right? So we want a few of these pixels of an edge as sort of a buffer for our mask. So I'm just going to click here, hit H to go back to the hand tool, hit G to go back to the pen tool, and I'm going to be using both the hand tool and G, the pen tool, throughout this process. And if you want to create a curved edge, you can certainly do that. If you hit G again, go back to the pen tool and click and hold, you can make a curved line like so. Or if you just click and want to go back and make this a curved line, you can click, hold the Alt Option key and it will make it curved. But for this tutorial, I'm just going to go in and quickly do linear lines, straight lines, not curved. So let's just go in and I'm going to fast forward as I draw the mask around this boat. And this may happen right here. If you go back and fix one of the previous dots, it'll create another mask if you don't select the last point of this path. So let me undo that and show you. So right now I went back to correct this one and notice how it's a solid color. And if I try to click again, it'll create another mask. So I'm going to hit Command Z to undo that. And what you have to do to fix that is just select the last point, make that solid, and then continue on. 
So that's how you make sure not to accidentally create another mask. All right, let's continue drawing our mask. So here I'm zooming out because we actually don't need to be as precise around this area because if I turn back on the text layer, if I hit V on my keyboard for the selection tool and turn back on the text layer, you will see that the text actually ends here. So I can actually loosely draw the mask above this section. So here I can just go back to the G to the pen tool and continue drawing it just loosely around this area, right, until about right here. Then I'm going to turn back off the text and continue drawing my mask. So now I'm going to zoom out and close off the mask by selecting the very first point over here. So I'm going to draw one more point and then close it off. And now we have our full mask. Here, let me just fit it back into view. All right, so the next step is to turn back on the text. And you can see that the text is inside of the boat area and we don't want that. So to fix that quickly, just click on inverted. And now the text is behind the boat. Now the next step is to animate the path of this text, right? So we're going to toggle down from the mask and hit the stopwatch on the mask path. And that sets a keyframe. So that way this point in time is set. And what we want to do is animate this mask to stay with the shape of the ship as it moves. So to do that, let's first create two more keyframes and then we'll go back in and refine the mask if there are any issues animating it. Because this is a linear movement back and forth, it is fairly simple to animate. So if I pull this back, you can see that it just moves back, but the mask does not move with it. So to fix that, just select the mask one, make sure mask path is selected and make sure you're using the selection tool, which is V on your keyboard, then drag by selecting the line here, move it back to be aligned with the boat shape again. And it's easier if you zoom in, I'm just using the scroll on my mouse and the hand tool to zoom in. And then I can go back and use the selection tool V on my keyboard to move it in the place that I want. So it doesn't have to be exact because we can go back in and refine it. But let me zoom back out again. And now you can see that the mask moves to this point. But then we have to animate the second half here or more like the last three quarters of the shot until the end. So let's just move it all the way to the end and then hit the selection tool again. Make sure that the mask path is selected. Then select the edge and move this over into place here and let's zoom in, use the hand tool, and let's hit V for selection and let's move this so it's aligned with the ship outline like we made before. All right, so now if we go back to fit and we play this back, you'll see that it stays with it roughly, but it's not perfect. So to get rid of the mask outline, just click down here and let's play it to see how it looks. So it's looking pretty good. You can see a little bit of the edge here, which we can fix and refine. So let me show you how to refine this and then I'll show you the end result. So to refine this, what we're going to do is sort of scrub through and see if we see any blue outline around. So that makes it obvious that the mask is there. So let's zoom in again and let's hit H to go to this point 
and you can see a little bit of this blue outline here. So to fix that, go back to V to selection tool and let's toggle down. And so here, what we wanna do is just move this over so it's aligned. So let's click on it. And this only moves one line here because we just have the mask one selected. But if you hit mask path, then you'll be able to move the entire mask together as a whole, which actually saves you time. So I'm gonna move this back into place and it will create a new keyframe. And then what I'm going to do is just keep scrubbing along here until I notice that it goes out of alignment again. I can even scrub backwards to do that and then go to different areas of the boat to double check to make sure everything's okay. So again, I'll just scrub through and see if anything gets out of alignment. That looks good. Right here, it's out of alignment. So let's go back to the selection tool by hitting V and let's move this back into place like so and see how it created another keyframe. And then I'm gonna go back through again, keep scrubbing, hit H for the hand tool and just kind of find if there's any points around the edges that you start to see that blue occur. So that's looking pretty good. So let's continue scrubbing. Continue scrubbing. Don't see anything there. That's pretty good. So did a pretty good job at staying aligned, which is pretty awesome. So the end result, if I go back to the original, well, let me just show you what it looked like here first, is a pretty cool effect and it's really easy to achieve it just requires a little bit of patience so this is the final result that i did and i actually changed the color of the blue to do that i actually selected the white boat video clip went to effects and presets and searched for change color and i dragged this onto the clip here and then from effects controls i just selected the color i wanted to change and then I adjusted the hue. So if I was just at zero, it would keep it at the original color, but I changed it to minus 20 or minus 25. And you can just change the hue. If you want it to be purple, you can change the hue too. You can just hover over it and get the color that you want if you want it to be a pink ocean. So I'm gonna change it back to minus 25. So as you see here, if I go back to the mask path, here you can see in my final result, there were a lot of different adjustments that I made to get it just perfect. And I also add two points of feathering. You don't wanna to add too much feathering because if I add too much, let's say 20, and I click out, you will see that there's almost like a drop shadow behind the boat. And we don't want that drop shadow there to make it more obvious. We just want it to be subtle. So I just added two points of feathering and that looks a lot better. So that's it. Just have a lot of patience. Have a lot of fun with this. You can use this for your next opening title sequence. There's many different purposes you can use this with. So if this video helped you out, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Also subscribe and hit that notification bell so you're notified when I make new tutorials every week. And if you want priority support to your tech questions and free templates every month, you can become a Premier Gal patron by going to patreon.com slash Premier Gal and leaving a monthly tip. Thanks again for watching everyone, and I will see you all very soon. Bye.